what's Gucci guys, Zach out here. It's really loud out here, so we need to get in the bowl. Today we're doing a skate DIY. No, we're not doing a skate DIY tutorial. We're actually doing a skate photography tutorial. Three simple tips to increase and improve your skate photography skills. We got Al Burnell here at Carmel Valley Skate Park to help us today to get into the madness. What's up guys, long time no see. It's good to be back on the show. Um, so today we're doing skate photography and there's a lot of things important to skate photography, but the first one is you can't just be any photographer off the block. You gotta be a skater to shoot a skater. I'm gonna go over four quick steps to get you up and going, shooting skate photos nice and sharp in no time. First thing I wanna talk about is shutter speed. Shutter speed took me forever to figure out. I don't know why. I'm just gonna give you a brief overview. I keep mine from one to 800 to one 1,000, so in between 800 and 1,000. Basically, the reason I keep it in between that zone is to isolate as much motion as possible so there's least amount of motion blur because it's skating, it's action, there's a lot going on. Some people actually use shutter priority mode. That is another thing that you can do in the very beginning if you want to get used to it but i honestly think it is better to just put your camera in manual and get used to the settings because then you can take advantage of them considering whatever environment that you're in all right so next thing you're going to want to worry about is your f-stop your aperture with your aperture i normally try to keep it at like a 5 to a 10 anywhere in between there basically the really really low f-stops like a 3 to a 2 you can get really crisp photos, but it's really hard to find a focal spot and make sure that you're not getting blurry. So as a standard, get you up and running, five between 10 f-stop aperture is a good place to start. So just to round up ISO, basically you wanna keep it low as possible. Don't go anywhere over 3200 probably, and you could go anywhere from 100 ISO, depending on what camera you're shooting, what lens, everything like that. Again, I'm just going over some super brief settings today. This is an expert level, just beginner stuff to get you up and going and get some crisp photos right away. Okay, so I also think it's important to get the skateboarder's perspective. As a photographer, you shouldn't just be worrying about the camera settings, the angle, and everything else. It's good to get the skater's opinion. So, Al, what can you do from a skater's perspective to help a photographer? Um, from a skater's perspective, you can be like, this is how I'm thinking of the spot when I look at it. What if you check it out from this angle right here, and we kind of collab, we come to a shared idea, a happy medium, his idea with my idea, we collab it, and we come up with something even better. Vice versa, the photographer can help the skater. If the skater's troubling, having trouble with the trick, he can't get over the bump to bar, he's not sure if he has enough speed, enough pot. The photographer's there, shows you the photo, you're like, oh, that's sick. I, if I landed this, then that, that would be so sick. Because, you know, you see the photo, you're like, I could really do this. Yeah, I can. I have to do it. Exactly. We're trying to figure out how to take a photo. Are you going to do selfish? Selfish. We're going to try to figure out how to take a photo of the selfish. My first thought is we have a sick shadow right here along the edge of the coping. So we're going to try to work with that shadow. Test it out. All 
All right, the second thing that we're gonna go over that's pretty simple and completely free is just composition and doing a good job of getting good composition. Now, that's easier said than done, but I think that really makes and breaks photos. A lot of people, and most people will probably tell you in a lot of other videos you'll watch is just grab a fish eye, get really low, make this spot look gnarly, and make this skater look gnarly, and there you go, voila, there's a sick cover of the magazine. But the thing is, if you're doing that, you're kind of just shooting the same photos that everybody is shooting. So that's why today I really didn't take a fit any fisheye photos try to use a more standard lens the what am i working with the 18 to 55 is that what's on there yeah 18 to 55 i think it's good to just take a step back and get creative think a little more about how you can tell the story use some shadows use anything in the foreground and the background i think jake darwin there's a bunch of photographers that i really love that do a really good job of this but i think that is a good thing to always think about and just take a step back where you are and think, you know, is there a shovel nearby? Is there a homeless person that I can get in the shot? You know, all these different things because they just, they add more to the story and it's not just the skater and a gnarly trick. It's the skater, a sick trick, and it's like a whole story packed into it together. So yeah, check out Jake's photos. His are really good and I think he is like on fire right now with composing excellent skate photography. left Carmel Valley Skate Park. Now we're down in Chicano Park. Gonna get out to do a couple more things for me. Soaked, hopefully you're enjoying this video so far. I think one thing to definitely take away is that always I'm always moving around when I'm taking photos. Constantly move around until you find like a golden spot where you're like, all right, this is exactly where I want to be when he gets that perfect trick and he gets the make, stay there. So yeah, let's continue with today's video. Now the third and final grand finale step for today's video is just timing. Getting good timing is everything that does really make and break skate photos. You know, if you're taking a photo of a rock and roll, you gotta make sure you get it right when it's decked. If you get it before or after, it's gonna look weird. You're not even gonna know what it looks like. You know, same thing with a flip trick, especially flip tricks. You gotta make sure you get them at the right point. If someone's doing a kickflip, you gotta make sure you get the kickflip right before he's catching it and you can tell it's a kickflip but he's also catching it right at that peak point. There's like that, that maxing point. That's where you always want to get it. So timing is really crucial with skate photography. And I think we've said it a few times. If you're a skater, you obviously have a skater's perspective. So you're going to have advantage already right off the shot. And if you use all the tips like we talked about earlier, like the camera settings, composition, and just the things that Al and I talked about today, I think you're going to be off to a good start. So I hope you guys like this video, get you up and running, take some good skate photos in no time. I'm not a master skate photographer by any means. This is just some tips that I've learned. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Mash. Rock and roll, ready? Rock and roll. Big training boy. I've been a rock and roll since this is a Second one. Oh,